Welcome, this video is about sourcing substrates for mushroom cultivation in a commercial aspect or even a large hobby aspect. Um, you can spend a lot of money if you buy stuff online. You want to source things locally, so I'm going to break it down where you want to look locally for each one of these items. I'll start off with grain spawn. Grain spawn, you're going to want to use a whole grain, uh, feed grade grain, so something you'd want to feed to your animals. So you're going to head to your local feed store. Uh, tractor supply, sometimes they'll have wheat, uh, not a huge huge um, selection, but if you go to like a local feed store, mom and pop kind of place, they have wheat, oats, millet, milo, which is also called sorghum, rye, all of these work pretty well. Um, they all have their own little quirks to them and they each need their own treatment. So you want to buy that around, it's around, uh, I want to say 10 to $20 per 50 pound bag depending on what you're buying, where you are, how the season was, because it's a commodity, you know, if, there's a, if it was a junky yield that year with wheat, the wheat's gonna be $13, not $12. So, but that's about the price you're looking at is around 10 to $20 per 50 pound bag for all of those whole grains. Um, so that's your spawn. From there, your bulk substrate. So if you're doing straw, obviously you'd hit up your, your you know, tractor supply they have bales of white straw, not hay, straw, it has to be the, the white golden straw. Um, I don't use straw, I don't recommend straw to my students or my consults. I recommend hardwood fuel pellets or sawdust. So hardwood fuel pellets, I find uh, True Value or Ace Hardware carries it. Home Depot, Lowe's um, also carries it a little bit, not, not as good of a selection. You really want to be able to like special order it a lot of times. Um, because you're that wacko that's asking for heating pellets in the middle of summertime. So you might have to order a whole pellet, a whole pallet of pellets, which is a ton, 2,000 pounds. That's 50 bags or 40 pound bags. Um, so with that, you're, if you're ordering a whole ton, you're looking around 250 to $300 a ton. I pay $300 a ton. I'm all the way out of the tip of Texas. I'm at uh, El Paso and it's $300 a ton. My friend Brad Elaine, he pays I think $230, $240 a ton. So uh, it depends on where you're at, depends on again the market, how far you are. And you want from, from the oak forest. So you want to get oak hardwood fuel pellets. That's the best, that's the most price, like uh, cost effective if you're using pellets. You can also use the smoking pellets, which a lot of the Walmarts carry, but they're $20 a bag, opposed to five or $6 a bag. So it's a big jump in price, but if you're a hobby grower um, and you don't wanna mess with the, the, deal with the mess of straw, go ahead and, and try those smoking pellets. They will work. They are hard, hardwood fuel blends um, and give it a shot. So from there you have your supplements. Um, supplements are wheat bran, that you get at a feed store typically. I pay about around the same as we, uh, the grains. So I pay about $13 for a 50 pound bag. That comes in a bigger sack, it's a lot fluffier. It can also come pelletized. Um, when I get it, it's like a flake, uh, very light powder. So that's one supplement. I typically use that for shiitake. You can use it for oyster mushrooms, king oysters, and all that, the other varieties as well. You can use it in a blend with the oysters if you want to as well. Um, cotton seed hull is another one that's commonly used. I've used it once or twice. It works okay. It works pretty good. You, you really want to mix it with other supplements as well, like, like wheat bran. Um, and that can also be get a, a feed store. More typically, it's going to be custom ordered. You can also go to a cotton gin uh, for the cotton seed hull, but it has to be a cotton gin that presses the oil out. So it's a, like a cotton oil press mill. Um, because once you press it, that's when you're left with just the hull, and that's what you want. You don't want the whole cotton seed with everything inside of it. Um, the other thing is beet pulps. Beet pulps are pretty good. Now, beet pulps are sugar beets, and they are processed for the sugar, and then it's this fibrous material left over, and they pelletize it, often fed to horses and cattle for fiber, and uh, that works pretty well as well, and you're going to want to blend that with wheat bran as well. And then there's also the cotton seed hull, I'm sorry, soybean hull. And soybean hull is what I use, Masters Mix, TR Davis was the one who figured out that 50-50 soybean hull fuel pellets or oak sawdust works pretty well and uh, works damn well. And the best place to get that is one uh, bulk commodities dealer. So if you're dealing with 
large amounts of mushrooms if you're growing you know hundreds of pounds a week and you can have a silo or a shed or something for them to blow it into or auger it into um, you can order tons of soybean hull and it's about a hundred and twenty to about two hundred dollars a ton two hundred and twenty dollars a ton if you're getting it in bulk like that I get mine secondhand from somebody who gets it wholesale they get a whole truckload at a time I get it from a, a um, from a dairy farmer so dairy farmers have huge bins typically just like a concrete bin of uh, basically supplements I mean they're, they're they're made for the feed but they'll have wheat bran they'll have soybean hull they'll have beet pulps they'll have cotton seeds all that kind of stuff um, and they get it you know 20 tons at a time a whole truckload now the deal with that is you have to talk to them and maintain a a uh, relationship with them to where they'll let you go in and fill up your drums or they'll fill your drums for you and you pay them on the scale you know you you tear out your vehicle fill up your drums or your vessels and then tear back out and pay them now not all these far, uh, dairy farmers want to deal with that uh, if you're uh, small like me I'm not gonna buy six tons at a time I'm, I'm gonna buy about a ton or two at a time and uh, a lot of these guys are you know millionaires or very very rich guys and they're very busy and they don't want to deal with making 100 200 bucks not even so uh, you, you gotta make sure that the price points right for them don't uh, be very courteous to them and uh, and be very nice but I like to bring fresh mushrooms as a, as a gift to them when I when I uh, pick up my soybean hulls so um, yeah that's one good place to get soybean hulls and then the other option is if you're gonna go bigger as a commodities dealer you're looking you're looking for a broker a guy who you know a company who deals with all kinds of of surplus not surplus but like uh, the waste from the agricultural industry so silage you know, the corn stalks um, soybean hull any kinds of you know the, the, the gin trash all that kind of stuff so you want to get a hold of one of them and figure out where you can get a truck delivered to or anything like that the last option for soybean hull is get it ordered um, bagged you're gonna pay more for it bagged typically I used to pay for a bag it was like five six hundred dollars a ton but the math still worked out when you crunch the numbers for, especially if you're doing a small grow, you really want to maximize it. So spending another $20 a week in substrate isn't really that big of a deal. But um, when I could find it for, for $200 a ton, I definitely jumped on that. Um, but yeah, I was paying about, I think it was like 580 or something like that a ton from Ranchway Feeds in Colorado and they distribute like all the way down to El Paso, so like a thousand miles away almost, I think it is, uh, they distribute to us and um, it was bagged out in 50 pound bags and I'd have to order, here's a junkie part, they wanted two ton minimum orders and uh, they claimed it was like a custom bagging. So like, I guess typically they would take the, the soybean hull and they would blend it and then pelletize it and sell that product. They wouldn't typically sell just soybean hull. So when they, when they would do the soybean hull for me, it would they'd have to make a special run and bag it out just for me and it was it was a lead time and a big headache so i'm glad to find the dairy farmers um so from there also i, I forgot to mention going back to your bulk substrate fuel pellets isn't your only bulk substrate you can also use raw shavings and i kind of skipped over this whole thing so there's two types there's shavings from a mill so like lumber from the woods comes in it's wet it gets milled on a big fat you know 10 foot diameter blade and it gives you these nice big shavings that's one of the best things to grow on the one hard thing with that is getting your moisture content right because it doesn't really want to hold on to water as much as the fuel pellets do fuel pellets kind of soak it up because they've been dehydrated so much they just soak up so much water um, and then the other option is you can try um, getting with like a local woodworker and, and using their shavings. The issue with that is the particle size and getting it hydrated again. Um, if you don't want like sander shavings, you want larger shavings from like a router or like a table saw or, or something like that. The finer shavings will make it into almost like a mud and it won't be able to breathe. So you want to have that bigger particle size. Um, hopefully this helped you out with sourcing some bulk substrate material and spawn material and uh, you find what works by you I mean if, if you can't find oak fuel pellets if I hear like pe people all the way out on the west coast close to the west coast can't find oak fuel pellets and they use um, 
Douglas fir and it works it's not as good but it works for like lions manes and oysters so try that and then the other thing is experiment so you know if, if you have uh, a supply of cottonseed hull and Douglas fir and some wheat bran try different percentages of each one and do little test batches of you know 10 bags each and see what works best for you what works best for the varieties that you're growing what species you're growing so well make sure you give this video a thumbs up uh, if you want to become a patreon a patron on my patreon check out the link below and you can help support my channel and help uh, me teach more people about growing mushrooms on a small scale commercially or at home as a hobby um, and uh, make sure you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already take it easy Keep on mushrooming.